Did you get mad after that first goal against? Of course I did. Shorthanded? Blech. Right, right. But was it just me, or could you not get all the way mad? All the way mad? I couldn't either. What was that? Luke Shen. Luke Shen, because of the vibes. 100% the vibes. Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What the <laughs> Not nice! There's a giant head! <laughs> you hear yourself! I made like 2,000 of these. I'd like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. He was a leaf before you were born, you see. Look at him. He, we're recording this late, aren't we? I woke you up to do this. Yeah. How you doing, pal? Look at him. Let me go back to bed. Who scheduled a 9 o'clock start before the trade deadline? You're evil. <laughs> Luke Shen is a leaf. It's 2023. Ah! Leafs win! 2-1 over the Calgary Flames. Listen, I gotta tell you, I call it the way I see it. Every game I call it the way I see it. Yesterday, I said that was the Leafs' worst loss of the season. You know why? Because it was. This game, the very next night, was one of the most encouraging Leaf games of the season. We'll break it down, heading into the trade deadline. By the way, if you're watching this, it's trade deadline day! I mean that or you're late. First, think you know which way it's gonna go? Head on over to Sports Interaction. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game, live betting on all major sports, including baseball. I love saying that because it means the sun! And also, uh, prop bets. Wanna bet? Head over to sportsinteraction.com slash STPN and download the Sports Interaction app but only if you're 19 plus, please play responsibly. So before yesterday's Oilers game, I talked about how this might be a little difficult and it's been an emotional week and Leafs are getting traded away and friends are getting traded away and that's really emotional for guys and it hurts feelings. And also you're on, you're in the middle of a five game road trip and you've been in Seattle for three days and there's three trades in one day and then the next day you got to take on Connor McDavid with the, with new teams and like, imagine being Jake McCabe in that situation. I, I gotta figure out how this team works against him. And then you have Calgary the next night and Vancouver on Saturday, you have three on four and your only day of rest is the trade deadline. Why does the schedule maker hate the Leafs? There's a few really bad stretches. Dude, the final three games of the regular season are all on the road. It's three games and four nights, three different cities. Again, I ask you, why? And of course, last night goes really, really poorly. But the lineup for this game just proved to me the Leafs are like, fine, we'll figure it out later. Because Sheldon Keefe went vrrr, just spin the wheel. Ooh, clever LFR title. The wheel and the wool, or the wool and the wheel. Pick one, Drew. Wh whichever one he put, that's what he picked. 11 forwards, 7 defensemen, and Timothy Lilligren was not one of those 7 defensemen. And a lot of people, including some of my friends, frantically texting me, were very upset about that. Timothy Lilligren was not healthy scratched. He was not. Unless the words leave Sheldon Keefe's mouth that he was healthy scratched. I will not believe it. The dude got injured in yesterday's game against the Oilers. He got hurt, got up slowly, went to the bench, tried to do another shift, and then after that he left the game. There's a game the next day. The Leafs are carrying 18 defensemen or whatever the number is. What on earth is the point of playing Lilligren in this game? There isn't one, so they didn't. And I'm not even gonna bother talking about the D pairings or the line combos because there were, someone go and find how many actual line combos at five on five were used. Like that's an impossible game to navigate if you're Daryl Sutter. You, you don't know what's coming at you. You basically negate the whole home ice advantage thing. Kind of makes sense that in the first period, like the first few minutes of the first period is when the Leafs looked their worst because they're basically saying to Calgary, hey, look, here are the lines. And then after that one nothing goal for Calgary, it's just, galaxies and moons and planets revolving around Sheldon Keefe's head like lines are a human construct. Like you couldn't even look out there and see who the center was and be like, ah, I know what to do. There's Matthews. What does that mean? Matthews bunting Marner, Matthews bunting Nylander, Tavares, Matthews Marner, Tavares, Matthews Nylander. Tavares is the most confusing one. All right, what position is he even playing? But the game starts and the Leafs are handed a gift. They have a power play and they get on the power play and they, and they oh, oh, Calgary's going down to the other end. And it's okay, didn't go in the net, so we don't worry about that. 
Leafs are back in the Calgary zone and we're happy about that. No, my God, it's a breakaway! The puck skips over Eric Gustafson's stick, who, but by the way, at the end of the game, I was convinced he had a, a, a stick blade that was maybe two inches thick. All pucks do is hop over the guy's stick. How does he have 38 points? Blake Coleman gets a breakaway on Joseph Wool, scores. Lots of Leafs fans in attendance and a bunch of them can only think one thing, we're about to have a very bad time. And it was this funny thing. After that goal went in, slowly but surely, over the course of the next 55, 50, 45 minutes, the Leafs just put together a really strong effort. Because the Flames were bringing it. The Flames were skating in this one, and you could tell there was an energy to the fact that Jake Markstrom was having a very good game, and those games have been sparse in recent memory. But there was a little bit of a playoff vibe. Like, there was some scuffles after the whistle, and face washes, and guys shoving each other, and big hits, and Luke Shen and Nazem Kadri going at it in the- in what year? Both of those guys are Stanley Cup champions, by the way. Absolutely wild. And it's one thing when your team is starting to play a little bit better, and they're starting to play well, but it's another when they're losing. It's just harder to see when they're losing. And that is when Mitch Marner, who has been on absolute beast mode this season, and this month, and this week, and this everything, takes the puck, solo effort, snipes it past Jake Markstrom. I, how, how am I going to have a voice tomorrow? 1-1. One, one. Assisted by Austin Matthews and David Kampf. How did, how, was that at the end of a shift? I swear David Kampf was in like two trade rumors and he just decided to go on like the best offensive clip of his career. He's got points in seven out of his last 12 games and in three of his last four. Because yeah, of course he does. That makes sense. There was lots to love about this performance. It's just... As much as the Leafs struggled defensively, they were even worse offensively to start. And against Edmonton, they were brutal. Like, one of those goals doesn't even go in if it's not for the fact that Edmonton didn't know that the play was still going. But you had a feeling this line was due, or at very least that duo of Matthews and Marner was due, because Marner's been flying the whole time. But one thing I didn't really talk about in the LFR video yesterday, Matthews was mid like he was not really noticeable and when you did see him you didn't see him doing much in this game against the flames oh a little bit snake bitten still but flying flying out there hustling banging into everything falling down if that's what it took blocking shots stick lifting back checking getting into every play in every zone i loved Matthew's game in this one. He does not need to be potting goals to be an effective player for this team, although it'd be nice. And then we get into second intermission, and by the time the third period is a few minutes old, it's just like, oh, the Leafs are just playing very well. And as they got more comfortable with each other and their systems and their everything, they're able to do some things. Like, for example, will you Neil Andrew can give it to Morgan Riley, who jumps up in the rush and has a breakaway! He stopped! He has another chance at it! Stopped again! Yarn Crook with a little ah! ah! Did it count? Watch the replay, it does! Cal Yarncroak bats the puck in past Jacob Markstrom. Oh my goodness. He bats the puck in past Jacob Markstrom. More regular season goals in Calgary with the Leafs than he did with the Flames. Hey, that's no business of mine, Cal. You've been great since you got here. And that would end up being the game-winning goal. Calgary thought they had the game-winning goal a couple times. Blake Coleman thought he had his second of the game, but he just hit the post. I'm pretty sure this is going to end up in next week's dang. It's, it's, it's tough when, like, we just released the video. Sometimes the Thursday night ones get left behind. That That's a good one. I haven't seen a dude celebrate a goal that wasn't a goal like that for a long time. Like, I've seen goals get called back, but like, this wasn't even- the play didn't even stop. And Nazem Kadri found a way to beat Joseph Wool as well, and that was a goal, except it wasn't. And you knew it wasn't gonna be. You heard the Leafs screaming, I want to say it was Achari was screaming that it was offside, and it was clearly offside. You knew it was offside by the fact that the review didn't take 10 minutes. It's funny, it felt like the offside review was initially implemented to get rid of instances of Matt Duchesne being like a kilometer offside, and really we've just been analyzing like inches and frames. No, this was just an old school way offside goal. All the while, Joseph Wool making some really good saves on shots that weren't completely offside, and the team around him 
clearing the front of the net, making life miserable in the corner, miserable behind the net. TJ Brody and Morgan Riley and guys were doing a great job getting in front of shots and clearing rebounds. Joseph Wolf faced five shots on goal in that third period. Five. The Leafs, who were winning that third period by one goal almost the entire time, outshot the Calgary Flames 10 to five. There were some moments in this game where it felt like the Leafs were spending a lot of time in their own end, but they were just mangling the Flames the entire time they were there. Luke Shen, Jake McCabe looked so much more comfortable in this game than he did in the Edmonton game. After what they did in Edmonton, this is a huge redemption game for the Leafs and a three games and four night stretch that had the potential for the Leafs to go 0 for 3. Now they go into Vancouver on Saturday and they can go two for three. Questions. Here's Luke Shen with the MVP belt. If if you need a good cry today, do you need a good cry? Yeah, I need a good cry. I, I talked about it uh, yesterday and I talked about it in the Luke Shen trade video. Man, it means a lot that this dude who played for some really bad Leafs teams a long time ago really <laughs> took a long journey to get back here and it's incredible that he had his time with Tampa and the fact that he was excited do you see how genuinely excited Luke Shen was to be a Leaf oh my goodness another little observation maybe we should have known the Leafs weren't gonna lose this one when Michael Bunting walked into the building wearing this you are not losing when Bunting puts on the Spongebob socks does this team got the passion yeah no we're never gonna let CJ live this picture down and I love it Joseph Wool goalie won for game one versus Tampa listen I've been a little disheartened by some of the performances that I've seen out of Ilya Samsonov recently He's, it's not even just that goals are going in, goals are beating him point blank, and also, like, he's having a real hard time figuring out where his goal posts are. Like, a little bit like Mrazek, but not nearly as extreme. It's gonna be tough because Matt Murray is coming back off LTIR, and you need to know what you have in him in order to evaluate, so I imagine he's gonna play some games. But what I've seen out of Joseph Wool in the NHL this season, and knowing what he's done in the AHL this season, I think the chance of Wool starting game one, even injury free, is greater than zero. I really believe in this kid. And lastly, what you up to tomorrow? Anything fun? If you want my trade deadline coverage, you go to the SDPN Sports YouTube channel. SDPN. All day deadline day. And if the Leafs do something, might be a video or two on this channel as well. Now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Welcome home, Luke. I just did a whole intro, Drew, and I was not recording. Okay.